Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Sorry. So today we are going to walk you through by giving you a quick high level view of what man stands are does and what we teach to our customer who want to do stream processing at the LinkedIn. So, so this is the kind of over agenda we have for the next half an hour to 40 minutes. So I will give you an introduction and background about Apache Samza and Mad Samza at LinkedIn. And hey, Beijing. I'm, I'm sorry again. Like I don't see your presentation. Oh, you can see my print. How about now? No. Uh, how about now, Aditya? No, I don't see it. Okay, now now it's good. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what's happened. Okay. Cool. So this is kind of like overall agenda, what we have for the, for the next half an hour. So um, first I'll give the introduction and background about match standard at LinkedIn and what's the value proposition that managed standard has to offer for our customers. And then I will cover some typical use cases and the uh, general use, user experience. And then Aditya will talk about the internals of Magic Samza and share the experience and lessons we have learned. So um, to start off why Magic Samza, here is some background about Apache Samza. So hey, Apache uh, uh, I think it's gone again, presentation. How about? Yeah. Okay. okay. So Apache Samza is a scalable stream processing engine that allows people to process data in near real time. Samza is LinkedIn solution, so it's a pretty old open source project. At the LinkedIn, it has been used in production since like 2014. And currently there have been thousands of applications in production already. So uh, at LinkedIn, one of the major things we have been working on is we want to make it effortless to create and run Samba apps at any scale and want to make it like, uh, cost e effective. Samba comes up different flavors. Samba as a library, Samba on Young, and managed Samba. So users can run Samba as a library in standalone mode. User can embed its data as a component within a larger application. So they can import Samza as a library and write streaming processing logic within their existing application. So in this mode, everything is under user's control. User has lots of, of uh, flexibility, but mean, meanwhile, user is responsible for pretty much everything both the app, um, app management and resource management. What users do for app management? First, users need to write their app in imperative language, like in Python, in Java, and they need to manage sense of framework dependencies, test the app in experimental cluster, set up configurations to queue the app, publish and deploy their apps. This kind of long journey to make an app in production. And user need to repeat this journey for every uh, framework dependency upgrade and deal with any bugs in framework. User is the first POC for all the alerts. When the app goes down, user is the, is the one who will take first look before involving Sandra team if there's any issue with Sandra framework itself. So all the alerts and monitoring are user's responsibility. It's user to keep the app uh, up and running. Besides the app management, users need to manage resources as well. They need to manage the hardware, like the hardware failure or add more hardware if the applications need more resources. And also, they need to scale the um, resource allocation based on their app's needs. For example, 
to scale up the resources like the CPU and memory when the traffic is very heavy and scale you down when the traffic is low. Um, since the resource management is a very big piece of work, so a lot of users don't want to manage the resources by themselves. So Samza comes up a lot of like, flavor. User can run Samza on young cluster. Um, the management responsibility about like, running Samza on young is half and half divided. User manages the app while Samza team manages the resources. We use Yum as a multi-payment ma managed cluster, which provides failure isolation, failure handling, um, and resource management. And running Samza on Yum obviously helps to relieve users' burden a lot. But still, there are many observed pain points from app management. Uh, first, it could take like few weeks to create an app. As we mentioned in previous slides, it's kind of a long journey to make an app into production. And it could take time to upgrade the framework version. To upgrade the framework version, users need to recompile the app and with the new version and redeploy the app. Sometimes the deployment on some framework upgrades to uh, result in bugs in apps that could make users very frustrated. Um, it could waste the user cycle for issues with the framework. And also, not everyone, not everyone is adapted you, uh, using configs to tune the apps to fully understand and set up correct conf configurations. Um, there are some complexity there. And also, not everyone is aware of imperative language like Java or Python. And for the apps written in Java, or Python, users need to manually compile and publish it. So we cannot dynamically create those uh, standard Java apps. But we do have some customers. They do want to like, dynamically and programmatically create standard apps in their services. And the last but not the least, there are quite a few applications having similar use cases. Uh, we should be able to template those apps instead of reinventing the wheel every time. For example, um, it's common for users to compact records based on the keys in the database. It will be great if we can template these common basic needs and then users can set to submit some configurations or parameters like the record key and database table information through some portal or tool and then the app could be like, uh, automatically provisioned. Uh, so how to resolve all these pain points? Uh, how to make job creation faster and management simpler? So that's why many Samza comes to the picture, to resolve those pain points. So before we call manage Samza, uh, manage stream processing at LinkedIn as fast than a SQL, but now uh, we call it like, managed standard. In this mode, user just needs to focus on the app logic with zero configurations. Standard team we manage the app and resources. To resolve the needs of dynamically creating standard apps, we introduced fast SQL service. Uh, we will talk about fast SQL service like, uh, later. For um, users' responsibilities, now, user just needs to focus on the app logic and manage the app life cycle of the app. Currently, user can like, order the app with SQL, and, but we plan to support more DSL in the future. Resource allocation and resource sizing is done by standard team. We have dedicated young cluster for managed standard apps. Uh, for um, operational aspects like the uh, library updates, since we sort of do the um, app business logic with the underlying framework libraries, whenever there's a new version available, let's say standard version upgrade, what we do is we roll out that new version without updating users' app to that new uh, framework library. So users don't need to uh, don't have to like, worry about picking up uh, a new version every time. We take care of those underneath libraries. 
So for alerts, alerts goes to Samda team first. Samda team take care of the alerts and monitoring the alert. Uh, and we will involve user when, like, when there is some issues about the business logic. User will be alerted only if the issues from their own UDF. So uh, what's the value proposition that Manage Samda offers to our customer? Um, the vision is to, our vision is to build a platform that enables users to create stream processing pipelines within minutes and match them easily. I'd like to think about it in three uh, pillars, productive, smart, and reliable. So all, what well, all of this mean, uh, when we talk about productive, one of the biggest value proposition we bring to the table is how easy it's used for customers. So if the customer is knowledgeable in SQL, they can build an end-to-end -end streaming pipeline on the top of Samba SQL just within a few minutes. Uh, we do understand SQL is not uh, going to be good enough for most of the advanced scenarios. So we have augmented to that with user-defined functions in Java. And no configuration required from the user. We also offer uh, a orchestrator orchestration layer to help users to validate their app logic. We'll talk about this uh, later. So this enables users to find errors before job management. And smart, auto scaling is offered out of box, so you don't need to queue your apps based on the traffic. To make operation easier, we have smart alerting system for custom UDFs. apps. We have custom mm, dashboard based on the input and output as well. And also, managed stems must be reliable. Uh, we guarantee no data loss, at least once, one, once processing, and fault tolerance and fault recovery. So all of these are offered by Samza Engine. Currently, if users want to create a managed Samza app, we use, they can use Samza SQL to develop their business logic. In the future, we plan to support more DSL than Samza SQL. Um, but now let's like quick, quick, uh, quick look at standard SQL. So standard SQL um, use a as, uh, as the underlying engine to convert SQL to a logic plan. Uh, it's, uh, standard SQL supports standard SQL operations and support different IOs. Like for streams, uh, we support Kafka and Brooklyn. So Brooklyn is developed at LinkedIn and has been open sourced already. It's a stream ingestion service. It can inject stream data from different source type and publish to different destination type. Like uh, Kafka, Agile, even Hub, and many more. So we will use it in, in an example later. For stores, for example, it support Expresso, a document-oriented data store, which is developed at LinkedIn. Couchbase, which we often use as a cache. And Venice is a specialized TV store to inject and serve derived the data. Venice is also developed at LinkedIn. And we also offer predefined UD apps, the framework UD apps. Everyone can use it. But sometimes those support are still not enough. So in this case, you can apply your own UDF where you can do your own transformation or make, even you can make some REST calls. And now we support Java for UDFs. Um, just give you an example about Samda SQL. So here in the slides, you can see um, there is a case. The case is to um, enrich page view event messages with member profile data. Their data um, are saved in Expresso table. Um, the page view event is a Kafka topic, which has information of page, uh, page, uh, page views of each member. So let's say now your app shouldn't read data directly from uh, Expresso table, because maybe you run out of the Expresso quota. So what you can do is you can create a culture-based bucket as a cache for this. So you can create a Brooklyn string. Let's say um, the Brooklyn string name is identify profile change capture. So here, 
we use booking as change capture service. The source of the stream is an uh, espresso identity profile table. And under the hood, Brooklyn will send those change captures events of the espresso table to the Kafka topic. And then you can create a SQL job which is written from Brooklyn stream and insert those data in the culture-based top bucket. And later on, this culture-based bucket is something your other application can use for reading data. That's one way we can extend that SQL. And then let's say you want to enrich your data. You want to add more information about the members along with the page view event. Um, so what you can do is you can use join. You can read the Kafka topic. And for each Kafka topic, for each uh, Kafka event, you look at the culture-based cache, which has created in the first example. And then you can do join that data. And then you output the enriched data into some other topic. Let's say the enriched page view event. So that others can consume from that topic. So this is just an example to show you what Stamda SQL looks like. Uh, for more details about Stamda SQL, uh, you can check the talk about Stamda SQL engine, even by my coworker, Srini. I have copied the video link in the bottom of the slide. Next, I will cover some typical use cases. So now we have more than 500 managed standard pipelines in production. So before looking at the use cases, let's briefly go through the digital app, app architecture. Um, event producer. So it could be a service which produces events. For example, page view event, events we used in previous Samba SQL example. It could be database changes. It could be metrics. You have all these event producers, uh, which produce your events into matching systems like Kafka. Uh, you will have Samba apps which process those events from the streams and write those process data out to the output system. Let's say uh, it could be a database a REST, a REST services, or it could, it, it might write data again to another system like Kafka. Then your downstream applications can consume the results to do their own analysis. So you know, that's a typical uh, app architecture looks like. So what other use cases? Um, so you can use manage Samza for all these use cases, change capture, data migration, repartitioning, cache, um, window join, and window application. Um, I will quickly just go through some of them. So we, pick, uh, we put a picture about the workflow of change capture view use case here. So as we mentioned in previous slides, Brooklyn is a distributed distributed service for streaming data. Um, it has been widely used at LinkedIn for change capture of change capture of the source of two stores like Espresso, Oracle, and MySQL. As it shows here, user can create a change capture view by using a managed standard job, which consumes the change capture event from booking stream. And in standard job, there could be a string table join, join between multiple tables, filtering, masking uh, PII data, and so on. So uh, user can create database materialized view, like Expresso materialized view, um, which you can like, uh, create a derived uh, table out of the primary table. So uh, to conduct the derived table, for example, you may want to project only a few, a few fields and filter the rows, do some join, or even you can like, write your own UDF to do some custom stuff on the primary data, um, table. So this is data migration, and this is the data caching. Uh, we just, just uh, as mentioned we, in the previous standard SQL example. We can use cache base as the cache. Okay. 
Uh, let's switch the gears a bit. Let's look at the overall like, user experience and the operator experience offered by the managed lambda. So for job creation, Mandy standard provides two different ways. Uh, the first one uh, is repository-based authoring. So this way provides an end-to-end -end good experience in job creation. Typically, users can use our tools, like Samda SQL Shell, to test and order their SQL logic. And after validating the SQL logic, users can commit their SQLs to code and and then create and deploy the jobs through the shell. Uh, we'll introduce this more in the next slide, slides. And we have exposed uh, the CRUDA APIs for managed Lambda apps. So not, not only show experience, but this will also enable other services to create managed Lambda apps pro, uh, programmatically on demand. So the second way uh, to create an app is programmatic. So that's unblocking new capability which we didn't have before. Um, there are quite a few teams within the team that are in the process of using programmatic creation of Senda apps as a building block in their architecture. So this also enables lambda processing. Let's brief the repository-based authoring user experience a bit. Uh, during the authoring phase, first, Users need to develop their business logic with the inputs and output. After that, they can express the app logic in one of the DSLs supported by managed Samza, like Samza SQL. And then they can orchestrate their app, like validating the SQL in Samza SQL shell, where users can experiment their SQL logic. Um, we'll, we'll talk about SQL orchestrator later. Um, but all these verification tests, user can, uh, user can test their SQL logic against the data in our experimental cluster and then commit and deploy the uh, SQLs. So uh, this is the end-to-end -end user experience using repository-based offering. So for uh, for user management and operators, operations. As we mentioned, we announced users control over the app's life cycle, either from shell or, or Samba dashboard. That means we cannot decide when user can start or stop the app and whether they want to make change of their business logic. So these things are user specific. Um, they are supposed to be handled by users. User can create a new app and instruct it, uh, instruct it to start from a particular time. And they can like, uh, instruct the existing app to reprocess data from a particular time. So that's used a lot uh, by our customer. They can also like be configs for their UD apps when they deploy their app, if they want. Normally, they don't requ we don't require them, like, we don't require any config from user. So typically, those configs set up by user are just for their UDLs. So user can check the app status through like, Senda dashboard. We have Senda dashboard for all the deployments. In dashboard UI, there are, there, there are app code. Here is the SQL statement. And there are a few options where user can add and update the configs if they want. And user can start and stop that app. So after dashboard generated, user can just go to the dashboard to check their job data and control the job life cycle here. They can click here to um, check the job metrics. And we have metrics like lagging the count of input event and the count of output event and so on. So you can also click the job diagnostics tab here to check the top errors and the most recent errors if they have any. So in the dashboard, there are many useful information. Uh, we have 
for the management and operations experience of operators, we, we may have mentioned this in previous slides. So SAMTA team is the operator and it need to manage the app, the alert, pretty much everything. Okay, so that's about the user experience. Now let's, um, let's talk a bit about the SLA model we have here. So every time user deploy a new app, we automatically set up alerts and the dashboard and the user and the on call doesn't need to do anything. We also have like custom dashboard based on the input and output. And send the team is the first point of contact for the alerts. If there are some like customer uh, UDFs, UDFs um, used by the job and it hit issues, that uh, UDF related alerts will go to the user themselves. And we guarantee 99% job uptime, it exclude the job failure on UDF and downstream issues. We have lag SLA, which based on the type of the pipeline. For example, if any task go, is lagging for more than 10 minutes or 20 minutes, maybe there is something goes wrong, uh, we won't prevent that. So in such case, on-call will get involved. Okay, so next, uh, Aditya will like, go into the details on managed stamina and the hook. So let me uh, stop sharing. Thanks, Vichy. Um, I will first like uh, breeze through the internal details of uh, managed stamina, uh, followed by the learnings. Um, here is the high-level architecture diagram, which shows different components of uh, managed SAMHSA and how they interact. So a user first goes to the shell and other SQL statement, where SQL by contacting the orchestrator and validator service, and uh, he finally deploys the SQL job via shell deployment command. So the shell deployment command uh, ends up calling the stop and start APIs on the fast SQL service endpoint. And upon receiving the start request, the service bundles the SQL statement with the framework libraries and configs and pushes the resulting job to the YAN cluster to run. Now, as soon as the uh, containers come up in the YAN cluster uh, as part of starting the job, the SAMHSA dashboard service, uh, it populates the job information in its database and the user should now be able to visit the app dashboard UI to check the status of the app. Uh, look at the logs or metrics, etc. Like uh, user can manage the job from the dashboard as Vachin, Vachin mentioned like earlier. And uh, after the job starts running, uh, auto scale controller kicks in and it sizes the job based on the load. And it keeps like monitoring auto scale controller uh, to see how the load is varying and accordingly it sizes the uh, job. So uh, let me quickly dive into uh, some of these uh, components. Uh, actually, even the programmatic creation of apps also go through the uh, similar sequence. So Shell, um, Shell gives like a lot of capabilities uh, for users to seamlessly write and run some applications. They can use like Shell to test their SQL against like some uh, data and experiment with queries uh, while uh, formulating their app logic. So uh, it provides like some of the basic capabilities like command editing, history highlight, um, uh, auto completion uh, capabilities. And it has like some commands like showing schema, showing like what all data sources it has, showing the UDFs, uh, the, both the framework UDFs and the custom UDFs that the user has written. Uh, and also it does, um, it gives like a, a, a capability to run like SQL query. Um, so as part of like running that, uh, executing that uh, SQL query, uh, the job validation uh, and correction happens. Um, uh, like, let's say, if a resource is missing, if a schema is missing, if the schema, the input schema and the output schema, uh, they do not match. Um, and the select query, like whatever fields are given in select query and the output schema, like if there is uh, uh, any uh, mismatch over there, uh, it uh, looks at ACLs, um, uh, any ACL validation if the user Sorry, if the app has access to the input resources and the output resources. So um, it does uh, several such things. 
Um, and once this uh, validation, the static validation is done, there is like logical validation where the query is done against the data and uh, then it will display the results uh, in a streaming friendly way within the shell itself. So um, user does like a logical validation at this point. Now, um, these are the authoring commands and there are like other set of commands that uh, shell provides. That's the job deployment and uh, management commands. So here is a snapshot of uh, shell. Um, as I said, like uh, there are two sets of commands, authoring and deployment. As part of deployment, one can see what all apps they have, uh, when was the app like deployed last time, or like they want to re redeploy the job, like, if they want to like uh, uh, restart the job from a particular point in the past, uh, they can do all these things. So as I mentioned uh, earlier, like uh, uh, orchestration validation, it does uh, all the uh, validations. Um, and fast SQL service, um, uh, it has a rest endpoint with support for uh, start, stop, restart jobs, APIs. Um, it is the one responsible for creating the uh, sample SQL apps dynamically. And it determines the uh, framework libraries and configs for each app. Um, it, it also authorizes the user operation on the apps, like only people who have authorization to uh, work on those apps, they will be able to start or stop the apps. Uh, and uh, another thing that it does is like whenever a SQL uh, job is created or updated, uh, this fast SQL service, it um, uh, figures out like what are the inputs and outputs that are there in the SQL statement and it automatically uh, generates the dashboards and it also automatically uh, sets up the alerts. So it also provides backfill capability. I'll uh, talk more about it in the learnings. So autoscale uh, controller and yarn cluster, um, autoscale controller, it does like uh, scale up, scale out, and uh, scale down based on a uh, few heuristics. Um, so basically on the input QPS and processing lag. Uh, and also it is, since we support like remote store uh, accesses, so it, should, it is aware of like remote store read write quotas as well. Um, now, uh, which I already mentioned about uh, young cluster, it, it provides like a multi-tenancy and it's fully managed by SAMSA team. Uh, it uh, gives like a failure handling out of the box. Now, let me go through the learnings. So uh, we've been running like Samsung apps, Java apps for like almost like seven years and manage Samsung apps with SQL dialect, dialect for uh, over two years now. Um, so uh, we have quite a bit of like uh, uh, learnings from there. Um, uh, I will uh, mention like uh, one of the, some of the salient ones. Um, so we have like thousands of Samsung apps processing millions of like, uh, messages per second and hundreds of gigs of data per second, like 15% of them are managed SAMSA apps. Uh, now our target is to reach uh, 80 to 90% of like the new SAMSA apps to be managed once uh, in the next couple of years. So um, uh, learnings wise uh, with respect to authoring, there are like a lot of them, like, uh, but this is the most important one. Um, a rich validator, it goes a long way in reducing on-call load. So we want to ideally catch user errors uh, during authoring phase itself, where we can give like good legible feedback to the user rather than throwing an uh, obscure exception at runtime. So for example, uh, with CDC data, it is very easy for users to not account for delete opt types, um, which result in issues ranging from MPEs to data inconsistencies in production. It'll be extremely hard to debug uh, at that time. Um, so rich validator is um, uh, very important. And um, uh, with respect to user authored uh, UDFs, um, so since we have like smart alerting and everything, like if users write their own UDFs, um, if there is an issue in uh, their UDF, like the alerts go to them. So um, our users like want to avoid writing custom UDFs for the same reason. They don't want to like manage it, partially manage it. So um, as much as possible, um, uh, we should provide the framework UDFs like that are generic enough. Um, that's one learning. And the second one is, it's not always easy to automatically determine where to route the apps uh, if uh, uh, the job runs into any issues. Uh, it's a hard problem. Uh, uh, and with respect to deploying a newly created or updated like uh, managed SAMSA apps to production, 
um, we need to provide a, um, a staging environment for SAMHSA apps to be vetted before promoting it to production. So when it gets promoted to production, it's a SAMHSA team that is responsible for managing that job. So we want to wait it like properly before it lands in like production. So, um, so we want to have that uh, staging layer. And now, uh, but another problem is like waiting the app before pushing it to prod is a, uh, is a challenge. Uh, considering that it is a function of the diversity of the input data and the SQL operations that are actually done uh, in the SQL statement. So that, this is something that we are uh, trying to solve as much as we can. And uh, schema evolution. Um, so minus Samza is like fire and forget. People write like SQL statement and unless their business logic change, they don't want to like revisit that again. But the input, uh, uh, the resources that they're accessing, the schema for that might change any time. So uh, it'll be great if uh, the managed um, uh, SAMHSA uh, automatically handles that schema evolution. Um, we have done it like for a few cases, uh, but we are trying to cover all the other cases as well. Um, and with respect to operational enhancements, um, Upgrading, so SAMHSA team is responsible for like upgrading framework libraries and uh, configs, um, but um, upgrading the framework uh, uh, libraries without app or user knowledge, is a very hard problem. So we need to have like a very robust validations after upgrading all the apps um, of uh, different varieties, like they will have like different use cases. And um, if something fails, if any of these validations fail, then we need to have a reliable rollback. So this is something that we are actually uh, 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 working on currently. With respect to backfills, we use Lambda. So we have like uh, two different APIs for uh, batch and stream processing. Uh, we are in the process of unifying those APIs. Uh, but there is a problem with Lambda. Uh, there is like an operational and management challenge because um, uh, the bad jobs, they run in a different execution environment than the uh, streaming jobs. So uh, for stateless uh, processing of uh, uh, change capture data, we follow Kappa architecture where uh, the bad jobs also run in like streaming layer. So uh, we are also working towards like uh, on-demand uh, uh, backfill without any hit to data availability by having like parallel reprocessing uh, in the background, having different versions and all that stuff. The next one is like uh, auto scale. Auto scale is a must have for a uh, uh, hosted SQL solution. Um, otherwise uh, the load keeps changing. There are like a lot of variables over there. It's tough to configure the jobs. So we need to have a robust like auto scale. Now, um, it has worked like with few heuristics that we have like pretty well for most of the cases, but for some like uh, really like complex cases where we have like joins, we are inserting into like several different like stores. Uh, we, uh, uh, there we require like some ML models to actually make this such uh, scaling decisions. Uh, we are working on that actively right now. And uh, with respect to cost optimizations, we have quite a few SQL jobs uh, working on the same set of data and publishing the same set of like data data set, which could have been like uh, easily reused across different apps. So uh, we are working towards like a building uh, a metadata layer, making such data sets like easily discoverable. And there is another case like uh, typically like uh, streaming jobs are long running jobs, but they're like jobs that like people uh, stop like uh, after like a couple of years because uh, they found like uh, uh, another app, they've created another app, advanced app, advanced algorithm. So um, we need to detect and delete such uh, uh, unused jobs and uh, release such resources. Um, and insights and analytics, like uh, we are using insights and analytics to get a view of the overall status of the apps and resources and get the resource usage and everything. Um, so this is like work in progress. Yep, that's all I have. Okay. 
I think we ran out of uh, time. I'm not sure like uh, if people have any questions. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Thank you.